In this video we are ranking every single character in Mortal Kombat 1 and this ranking will be based off the online experience, rank mode and versus mode. We are not doing offline, where this is purely based off of the ranked experience. Okay, so starting off, I'm gonna put Katana at buff her. She is quite honestly the worst character in the game, in my opinion. Um, she's definitely at the low, low tier. She doesn't zone good. She doesn't have good setups. I mean, I know her little thing. There, there were glitches where you could get infinite combos. But nowadays, uh, where everybody has pretty much the game figured out, sh you can't really set anybody up with Katana. Her, 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 her neutral is okay. Um, she has a zero mix-ups. So, so what she's supposed to be good at, which is like the keep out game, the little you know mid-range zoning game. There's just characters that are so much better than her that what what's even the point? So she definitely needs a buff, maybe make her projectiles faster, or maybe make her strings a little more safer. Now, I think the second worst character is not necessarily the worst character, or like not even like at the bottom three, but he's just not as good as the other characters. Like I said, this game, there's really not a bad character. Like this, that Katana is not a bad character. She's just not as good as the others. I think she's the only one that I genuinely think that needs a buff to even elevate her a little into the into the tier list. But Sub-Zero is really not that good this year. And I'm not going to lie, at first, he annoyed the shit out of me. But his overhead is, you know, his only real mix-up unless the person's using Sonya Cameo. Uh, and the overhead is, is somewhat reactable. Uh, you can see it coming and you can definitely block it and he's super unsafe. You can get a full combo off of it. And I'm not going to lie, if they decide to keep Sub-Zero... At the bottom, I'm 100% fine with it. Keep that, keep Sub Zero at the bottom. He's been broken in about three games before. I, I don't want to deal with Sub Zero. Give me one game where I don't have to deal with Sub Zero, okay? Now, the next character, the only reason I'm putting Shang Song at B, keep in mind, B is not a bad tier. Like, B is still really good. Like, it, you know, I don't believe that there is a bad character in this game. It's just people are just not as good as the others. Like, Katana is okay. Uh, I think Katana is the only one that's just not as good as the others. But I think everybody's a special specialty in their own way. Like, Sub-Zero even. He might be the worst on my tier list besides Katana. But his, like, long-range game with just spamming the ice balls and just putting out a clone in front of you, that is really dangerous. But Shang Tsung, I honestly think he hasn't been figured out. I think once people start figuring him out, he's definitely going to be like mid A or even low S, you know? Uh, with the right cameo, of course. I, I think that could definitely be the case. Now, this does hurt my heart, but we're actually going up to the A tier. And I'm going to put Natara at the A tier. Um, She's good, okay. Um, But besides her movement, there's really nothing special to her. Um, I played Natara day one. She was my first character I picked up. Her overhead is reactable, and uh, you are safe if you spend a bar, but it's still, you're spending a bar to be safe on an overhead, and her low really doesn't, you know, go into any combo unless you use Serena as a cameo or Sub-Zero as a cameo, any of the cameos that, like, let you have a combo. So it's like her neutral isn't that great either. She has some decent pokes, but her her hit-confirming strings are just not good. It's overall just not that good. Not as good as the others. Now, I have Lee Mei next, and I'm not gonna lie, this is, I think, my first bad take, but I just can't bring myself to put Lee Mei over the other characters. Maybe it's because, you know, we had her in the beta, but I just personally cannot bring myself to put Lee Mei over any of these characters at the bottom, because I've seen the potential of every single one of these characters, and I think it does far, I, I, far exceed Lee Mei's potential. And just gameplay-wise overall. Now, the next one I have is actually Sindel. I just made a video on her. If you guys didn't know, I've, I've played a lot. I've played like 99% of the roster. And Sindel, although is not weak, she's also not strong. She does have a really good uh, pressure game with her air special cancels. But if people just up-block it, there's, we're screwed. All, all, we, you land to the ground and you're going to get hit with a 40% ground pound that that your grandfather is going to feel. So for that reason, I have Sindel right there, but she's definitely not bad. We were making people quit. We were making people rage quit with Sindel. Next up, we actually have Smoke. And I know I complain about Smoke a lot in my videos, but 
I'm not gonna lie, he actually has a lot of holes in his strings. Like, if he tries to do the little air dash, you can armor out of it, you can poke out of it. And if you're full screen, just block low until you see him throw a grenade. Like, that's all smoke really does. It's just he makes you guess low or overhead, and his overheads are really reactable. So, I've learned to play against smoke, and I think as time goes on, smoke is definitely gonna go at the bottom of the tier list. Um, I'm sure there will be cameos that will put him back up to the top with his mix-ups like Striker, uh, Scorpion, um, anything with an overhead or a low starter. I'm pretty sure he'll be back up there, but definitely not at the damage that he's getting now. Like with the 40% with Serena he's getting, uh, that's definitely not going to fly by. Here we start with the probably the longest list, okay? At low S, I have Liu Kang. He's overall a great character, and he's the only character in the game that has a 6-frame poke which is the fastest poke in the game so he definitely has to be up there his good zoning he has plus frames on a lot of things and uh, his damage is insane especially in the corner uh 50 damage is it's like 50 damage is like breakfast for luke king in the corner like that is it's so easy to do and i'm pretty sure anybody with two left hands could pull it off now next up i actually have tanya and i think tanya is actually underrated and she's actually still unexplored. People are just not picking her up. She does look a little weird to play because she has to like power up her moves. But I genuinely believe that later on in this game cycle, she's going to be up there as one of the best um, characters in the game. Someone I hold really dear to my heart, Havoc. I loved making my video on Havoc. He was so, so much fun to play. His brutalities are amazing. Other than that, he's really just there. And... Uh, Honestly, you could even put Havoc at the really bottom of S. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing here. Uh, he's definitely not better than Liu Kang. He's definitely not better than Tanya. I still believe he's better than uh, Smoke. And I still believe he's better than uh, Li Mei and Sindel. And Natara and everybody else. Only because he does have that unblockable combo that you can start up after your original combo. And if you've seen my video on him, you know we can get the damage up to 600 or 550 like, like easily. We just get one combo in and we just have an unblockable combo to set up any time. So for that reason, I will put him at low S. But he's in no way or form at the top. But he's in no way at the bottom either. The next one I actually have is Reptile. And a lot of people played Reptile off the rip, and a lot of people realize that they're just not good at Mortal Kombat. I'm not gonna lie, Reptile seems easy to play, but Reptile is very, very difficult to play. I've seen pro players like Honeybee use Reptile, and you know, the way he plays Reptile is mildly different than what you'll see online. Um, the true way to play Reptile is actually a lot harder than it actually looks. And he has great mids, he has great pokes, um, he has decent amount of mix-ups if you bring the right cameo. He's still not, like, really good at a category that other people are already not good at. Now, I have Scorpion after Reptile, and I know a lot of people are going to be like, Scorpion is bad. Shut the fuck up. Scorpion's grab needs to be nerfed. I don't care what anybody says. His grab is broken. That shit, you will literally blink blink in a, literally a millisecond and you will be on the ground scorpion's gonna be ground pounding you with his with his asshole and you won't know what to do his grab is way too fast his back grab needs to be nerfed and uh, we need to we need to have that discussion i know he doesn't have mix-ups he's like a, a punished character but most people with scorpion are just gonna go full screen and spam spear and then they're gonna spam the same little stupid knee until like you know you poke and they do it before you so they get a whole ass 50% combo off of two bars. His grab needs to be nerfed and then I can definitely put him... Uh, his grab needs to be nerfed and then I can definitely not hate him as much. But he's definitely up there. Right after Scorpion, I actually have Rain. Me personally, I suck with Rain. I had to make a video on him and that video was hell. It was hell to make. But I will say after watching a lot of pro players and like tournaments, Rain is really, really good. I said in the video his normals are really good. His special moves are okay, uh, but with the right cameo like Scorpion and Sub-Zero, he is truly scary even close up. Scorpion will give you 37% combos, and Rain is supposed to be a zoner. He's supposed to be a keep out character. He's pretty much a good Katana. If Katana was good at Mortal Kombat, that's what Rain is. And Rain is just a better version of her. He's definitely the best keep out character in the game right now. Uh, maybe besides Raiko. Raiko's little shurikens are really annoying. But Rain has his little water shield to always outzone the other person. And there's also cameos like Sub-Zero that help you outzone. Now, next up, we actually have my favorite character, my main character, um, General Shao. 
he is definitely S tier. I don't know if he's nerf material, but he's definitely S tier. And he has amazing startups. He has a crazy damage. With Serena, you can get like 44% every single time on a hit. With Sub-Zero, you can get 41% every time. My personal favorite right now is Motaro because Motaro makes him a true 50-50 character. So people are really going to have to guess whether you're going to go for an overhead starter or a low starter. So I definitely have to put Xiao up there. He's amazing strings. He's plus on a lot of things. And him without the axe might be even scarier than him with the axe. And next up I have Melina. Melina is absolutely insane. I'm working on a video with her right now. And the amount of 50% damages you are getting consistently are absolutely crazy. Like if you're using Scorpion as your cameo with Melina, you're you're gonna do great things as long as you can hit those hit those uh hit those combos. She has okay zoning, she has okay keep out game. It doesn't go full screen, uh, but her teleports are really good. Her air strings are amazing. Her ground strings are amazing. And she's overall a really flashy looking character, which I appreciate a lot, you know? We whoop ass and we gotta look good doing it. That's one of the important things. Now, my second favorite character in the game is actually Ashra, and she is definitely up there. Her mix-up game is absolutely insane. After making my video on Ashra, where I saw a lot of comments talking about using Goro and Striker and using Scorpion to make her safe on everything, I ended up trying Goro. Goro makes her safe on every single mix-up she has, which is crazy, right? So imagine trying to fight against the Ashra that has a Goro and they know how to use their setups to be safe on everything. If you block the overhead, right? Keep in mind the overhead leads to a 40% combo. If you block that overhead and they call in the Goro, they're safe now and it's back to their turn. So they ha they get to press the buttons, not you. The low starter is also a 40% about, it's about 38, 39. And let's say they go for it and you block it. Now they bring in Goro and now they get to attack again. So it's a constant 50-50 if you have the right cameo like Goro, Striker. Um, I believe Cyrax also works, but probably not the best for Ashra. Um... But no, absolutely insane. She is she is really, really good. And she's really underrated. Now, next up, I have Gearus. If you have seen any pro pro player use Gearus, um, your mouth will be on the ground and your penis will be seven inches harder than it ever has. Uh, Gearus is the coolest looking character when they know what they're doing. I believe Gearus is harder than Kenshi. I think he's the hardest character in the game right now. Um, his setups... His damage, his just overall IQ you have to use around the entire match are insane. Uh, I've seen a lot of cameo combos with Gears. I've seen Sub-Zero, that works. I've seen Goro, Striker, uh, Scorpion, Serena. I've yet to see a Motaro, but I'm pretty sure Motaro would work too. But he's definitely up there. Really underutilized, underrated, and I believe in time he will be definitely looked at as one of the best characters in Mortal Kombat. Now, next up, of course, you know, Kenshi had to be there. I do believe he's the best character that's not broken. So he takes skill to use, but he's definitely not broken to the point where we have to nerf him. Um, he is definitely up there. The best character in the game that's balanced. I think he's the most balanced character overall. He doesn't have great zoning, but close range when he gets his stencil stance up. It is pretty much GG's. Uh, you better start quaking. Like, your butthole's gonna be quaking the entire time that little blue spirit is outside. And there's not much you can really do besides just block and take it like a bitch. Now, we're moving on to the nerf category. At the really bottom, I have Raiko. Nerf the command grab. No, in no fucking game should you be able to have a grab that's unblockable. Keep in mind, that's what a grab is. You can't block a grab. And that command grab leads up to a 44, 45, even a 50% combo. If, if you just simply grab an opponent, that is ridiculous. That's a story for another video, but I understand you. They're trying to give you freedom, but in no fucking world should a command grab lead up to 45% damage. If you meter burn the command grab, it already gives you like 20 to like 22%, I believe. So there's no reason we should be able to use a cameo and get it up to a 40% combo. Uh, that just does not make sense to me. And his zoning overall full range is really good too. He's definitely uh, one of the better zoners because of his little shuriken toss. That little kick has a bigger range than Shao Kahn's axe. Think about that. Like, I'm being serious. Like, he actually has probably the most range on a kick in this game. Like, that kick lasts the entire screen. So, 
if you, if, if you genuinely believe that, you know, he's not close enough, he is. He's close enough. He can hit you with a kick. Now, next up, we have Kung Lao. This man has a wake up that is armored and can be launched if you're using the right cameo, and it's safe. He has the only safe wake up in the game. You can't punish it. It's really, really hard to punish. And if you can punish it, it's not going to be for full, full damage. He's definitely one of the top tier characters. He has a true 50-50 if you use the right characters. And uh, overall, his damage is absolutely crazy. I do believe he has a command grab too. And uh, yeah, he's, he's very, very good overall in every single scenario in the game. Next up, I have Raiden. Nerf the shit out of Raiden's damage. If you guys didn't know, Raiden also has a passive where his chip damage goes all the way the hell down. And let's say a chip damage, let's say you're chipping somebody out and you do like seven buttons and a normal opponent would get chipped out for about 7%, right? Raiden's passive, you'll probably chip him out for about 3%. That's how much the change is. Like it is insane. I think it's like half. So nerf his damage and that passive is okay as long as the damage is nerfed. He should not be getting... 45% combos off of the same stupid fucking cartwheel that he does every single combo. That is crazy. And he's good with like every cameo. So it's just, it's like, what are you supposed to do against that? Now, now I hate Johnny Cage. He's safe on literally everything. It feels like he does a move and then it's just never your turn. He will continuously just mash buttons and you will just sit there and you will say, yes, daddy. And then you will take it until your life bar is at 0%. So I definitely don't like Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage and the Kano combo is nightmare fuel. And it's one of the hardest things to actually like get out of pressure from. That stupid Kano ball catches you every time. Hands down, the best character in the game right now is Baraka. Baraka gives you 50% damage on every little damage you can possibly get. Every single starter he has goes to a 50% to a 53% with one bar. And he's safe on everything because he has Cyrax. Like that is insane. Baraka is easily the best character in the game. Anyways, that's going to be it for today. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see some people rage quit or you just want to see me combo up, I'll put some videos on the screen.